Hey everybody, I'm Stu Carter from Atomai.com and I've got here the first wave of action figures for the upcoming movie, The Hobbit. So stand by for A Hobbit's Toy Review! Now these figures are made by a company called The Bridge Direct and it's not exactly a catchy name, I agree, and not a big name like Mattel or Hasbro. Uh, you probably don't, never heard of them, but you've probably heard of their toys because these guys are responsible for something called Justin Bieber Dolls! And if you've been a subscriber of my channel and followed my reports from Toy Fair in New York last February, guess what? You still wouldn't have seen these because they wouldn't let me get anywhere near them. They, they had guards and armed guards and stuff out front of the showroom. You couldn't get anywhere near these toys. But they're on the store shelves and I managed to snag some of the first wave. So we're going to have a good look at them. Now if you don't know, The Hobbit, the story of The Hobbit is a prequel to The Lord of the Rings. A big uh, trilogy of movies and, and books uh, and a prequel means well they made the movie after Lord of the Rings it just got done making the movies the three movies really but prequel means the story is in the same universe the same place but the story happens before Lord of the Rings so that makes a lot of sense huh and uh, if they follow the book more uh, the Hobbit story may be a little bit more suited for younger kids because Lord of the Rings was kind of nasty the sword fighting and stuff and there's going to be sword fighting in The Hobbit too so we'll just have to wait and see until it's released uh, you know to see what age would be appropriate to go see this movie uh, it's going to be released uh, it's called The Hobbit Unexpected Journey that's the first of the three <laughs> films for this uh, 28 November New Zealand you're so lucky New Zealand and then uh, 13 December in the United Kingdom, you know, Great Britain. And then 14 December, the rest of the world. That would be U.S. and everybody else. So let's see the characters we've got this first wave. So first we've got Bilbo Baggins. Well, this is young Bilbo Baggins, right? In The Lord of the Rings, Bilbo Baggins was old and he stayed at home. He didn't leave on the journey. But in this movie, The Hobbit, he goes on this journey uh, because his good buddy, his friend, Gandalf the Grey comes and says, hey, I want you to come along and have a, an interesting journey. And we'll just leave it at that. And on the back of these boxes, you'll see uh, another picture of the action figure and some of the other figures uh, that are available in the release. And also, they're showing you a picture of the actor in makeup for the movie. It's also on the front of the box as well. I took some pictures of these. Interesting. And also, they've got uh, Thorin Oakenseal, who is the leader of the band of dwarves who had this mission to fight uh, this dragon. And then a character you'll recognize uh, if you know Lord of the Rings, Legolas Greenleaf. He's the elven prince and he's handy with a bow and arrow. Like he's got like this super automatic uh, bow and arrow launcher. He can get a bunch of arrows off quick, especially if there's orcs coming. So that's it, what's missing is one character. Let's zoom in on this. So here's what's on the back of the box. You see the name of the character, this is Gandalf. And then a little synopsis, you know, a little summary of the story of The Hobbit. Uh, and, then, uh, and then they have a little bit of a character bio for each of the characters. And then uh, down here, they've got uh, some of the figures in release. And you see I've got uh, three of the figures here that I've got. And I've got uh, Bilbo also, but also they got Tario. It uh, looks like she's another elf, maybe an elf princess. I couldn't get her. I don't know if it was, maybe it's, she's sword packed in, in the case and somebody else snagged her. Or perhaps she will be released in the next wave of figures for this. We'll just have to see. All right, so you ready to open these up and have a good look? All right, come on. Right, so I've got all the figures out of the packages. Let's look at them one at a time. Right, so the first figure is Thorn Oakenshield, and he's the uh, prince. Uh, the leader of this company of drawers that's going after this uh, fire-breathing dragon. Uh, they want to take back their homeland, their mountain. And, uh, you know, all these figures, they certainly have the detail and uh, authenticity. It reminds me of uh, the expensive figures you'll get from, like, uh, NECA, especially, or to some extent, McFarlane. Although McFarlane figures articulate a lot more than these will. Uh, they're, they're both... Uh, all three of these companies now, this McFarlane, NECA, and this is the Bridge Direct, uh, they're definitely trying to be very authentic to uh, the story. 
and give you a lot of detail and authenticity to them. To some extent, that's going to limit how much they can pose and move around, but they sure look nice standing up there. Let's get a good close look at uh, Thorin here. First off, Thorin's got some stout boots, and I appreciate that. I was, you know, I like sword fighting movies, but I'm getting a little, I was getting a little tired of the sword and sandals type, you know, the gladiator flicks. I like, if I'm going into combat, I don't want to wear boots, and this guy's cool. He's not, he, and he's styling with his boots. Look at those uh, steel tips he's got on there, and they're tooled. You see that uh, they've got tooling into them. They look like more like they're brass or bronze. And uh, they're stout and they've got, you can see the details of buckles uh, as they go up the calves to hold the boots on. They're very nice. You can, uh, you can bend them uh, at the ankles too and at the knees, let me make sure it's, yeah, see, he'll bend at the ankles. Yes, yeah, see, he'll, he'll bend at the ankles and then you can rotate them at the hips and bend him at the knees somewhat and flex in and out at the hips as well. And then looking up, he's got a nice tunic uh, with some details. There's a belt there, and of course, then the belt for his sword scabbard. And uh, underneath his tunic, you can see there's a little bit of detail uh, of some chain mail. Chain mail uh, is, was from medieval times, uh, was a suit made of rings, steel rings or iron, and, or plates in this matter, and it was meant to help deflect uh, arrows and spear and sword thrusts. And uh, then we'll get a little bit of a look here at his scabbard for a sword. We'll pull the swords out, he's got two of them. And then what is this? Is this his oaken shield? That thorn oaken shield, that's his oaken, th I mean, it looks like some piece of wood he found out there in the woodshed, you know? It's just some old piece of wood, and he, he's crafted some kind of uh, iron or steel tips to them. That's going to be iron, right? They don't have steel in Middle Earth, right? And uh, <laughs> I guess that would block some blows, but it doesn't look like it's going to last very long in combat. Well, and, and I'm sure uh, in the book, J.R.R. Tolkien has spent 10 pages explaining in, in rigorous detail the long and storied history of how he got Thorn Oak and Shield. You experts could tell me about that. I'm sure <laughs> that's how Tolkien wrote, uh, which made the books rather long. And then he's, he's got a big uh, broadsword in the back, or he's got a scabbard that attaches to his back. And uh, I'll put those out in a second here. And then you can see a little bit of detail of his um, chain mail and his glove gauntlet deal, see? Nice detail. And again, his, uh, he'll bend at the uh, uh, elbows and at the shoulder as well, see? So that's a uh, nice articulation, articulation there. And then, the, you know, Thor, he's... He's got the beard and the hair, and you know, he's wearing it well. And you can see some details. He's got some kind of uh, metal thingies for his braids. He's got some little braid things. I guess he saw Star Wars, and uh, he's copying the Jedi there. And then he's got some gray flecks or streaks in his hair. And then in the back, you see some other uh, some bronze uh, metal parts that hold part of his hair down. And I'll take some nice photos of those, too. And uh, he's rocking that hair. Look, he's a, he's a be a he's a being a rock and roll band. I guess he'd play bass, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah, I think so. So he's got two swords. I incorrectly called this a broadsword. A broadsword technically would have two edges, and this has just one curved edge. And you can even see there's some details, some tooling into the edge here. Do you see that? That's pretty nice. That's his long sword, and that fits into the scabbard that fits on his back, and it goes into his hand easily. And then his second sword is a, a short sword. It is double-edged, but because it's short, I'm not going to call it a broadsword. But uh, and a nice detailing on this one as well. See how that you got those channels in there, and uh, you know some detailing and tooling here on the hilt. That's the part right there, it protects your hand. Right, and so there you see the swords are out, and their fists. All these figures have tight fists, but you can kind of flex the fingers and get the sword in there. But every time you flex those fingers, the fist might be getting a little bit looser. So just keep that in mind. Also with his arms up like this, you can see the detail. Oh, you can see the detail uh, uh, on the buckles on his gauntlets, which are nice. You know, that's a, a lot of stuff added to these figures. You can see he fell down, but actually almost all of these figures stand up rather easily. Let me get, get him back up because you can widen the feet and get him in a good stance and the feet are 
pretty solid and stable. One exception is Gandalf, and we'll talk about that when we get to him. And so that's Thorin Oakenshield of the Erebor Oakenshields in Middle-earth. Then we have Legolas Greenleaf, the Elven Prince, and, and the dude is styling. He's just as comfortable in a Hollywood nightclub as he is out walking around in the forest. The man has got some clothes, and he's a sharp dresser. Let's have a good look at him. Yeah, to start with, he has not necessarily boots. He has fashionable brown leather shoes with leggings, and the leggings have got these toolings on the leather. See that? Little gold toolings. No doubt elven style. And then you can see the rows of buttons down the back that hold the leggings on. That's very nice. And then Legolas has a long tunic that goes all the way down past his knees even. And it looks like a, a, a variety of either metal or heavy leather uh, chain mail to protect him in the chest region. And then he's got toolings uh, you know, on the, on the shoulders and lower arms than the forearms. And uh, that looks like it blends into the forest color very well. Sort of a camouflage to some extent, wouldn't you think? And you can see he's got his quiver and scabbards attached, and they go on his back. We'll have a good look at those. And finally, you know, the long, thin, don't hate me because I'm blonde hair. Why do all the elves have thin hair? Don't they have, you know, conditioners to use after they shampoo? That's what I would use. A good conditioner, give you some body there. Let's look at his uh, accessories. Well, I think, uh, well, Legolas gets the best accessories of the group, I believe. And uh, first off, here's his elven bow. If it was a true bow, there'd be a, a string, a bow string or a rawhide string uh, that, you know, to shoot the arrows. But at least there are, see, you see the elven toolings on the bow. He can hold this, but it's so thick in the middle. That's where I would hold it in the middle. And it's so thick, it's kind of, it was making his uh, fist open up a little bit too wide for his sword. So I, I took it out of his fist. I did take some pictures like that, but I wouldn't keep the bow in his hand for a long time. And next, he gets this great combined quiver and scabbard setup. You know, see, the quiver is where you hold your arrows, right? That's called a quiver. And you get five uh, arrow, one, two, three, six, excuse me. And you, know, you can take these out, they'll come out. They, they won't shoot, you know, notice they're really long for an arrow. Uh, I think uh, in, in modern scale, like what you would see most people using would be shorter arrows, but these are long and they're, and they're metal tipped. And you've got six arrows, but if I recall how Legolas shoots, he can shoot six arrows in about 15 seconds. So what are you gonna do then? And then, and then there's this uh, scabbard here, right? For the swords, he's got two swords and they're elven style swords. You can see the tooling, uh, and it's nice. Even on the on the handles of the swords, you see the tooling there. It's drawn in. Okay, it's not really tooled in, but that's what you'll call it. And and they're nice. I don't recall in Lord of the Rings him using his swords. Maybe he did. If you guys know, uh, help me out with the scene. And uh, another issue is these swords don't really go in all the way. There's a place where they kind of one of them might poke out through the middle here, which is not what you want. They don't really go in, they don't really fit into the tips of the scabbards like you would expect. So they kind of sit up kind of a little higher than I would like. But they stay in there and they attach to his back. You can see the little tab that uh, attaches. And they look very, you know, the, the scabbard and uh, quiver looks very leather. And it even has some raised tooling here, some raised uh, plastic on the, on the fake leather. And has the straps as well. So that's a lot of nice detail, and I think those are the best accessories. Between six arrows, two swords, the scabbards, uh, quiver, and the bow, he gets the most stuff. So that's a good deal there. So that's Legolas of the Woodland Elves. And we come to Bilbo Baggins. You know, he's the hero of the story, and this is young Bilbo. In Lord of the Rings, of course, he's old Bilbo, but this is the young Bilbo. And uh, very much in character costume here. And he's got some cool stuff he's carrying. Let's have a good look at all his parts. All right, and so first, just so you know, hobbits don't wear shoes. And they have big, hairy feet, just like your dad. Disgusting. I, I'll give you a tip, Bilbo. If you're walking through a cow field, watch where you're stepping, okay? You know, because we got to put up with you in camp later. And then Bilbo's outfit is a lot like a kind of a 
uh, English country gentleman, sort of a rough coat, and then he's got a, a vest or a waistcoat, and something like a tie as well. And he's got a surprise underneath his coat, I'll show you in a second. And then he's got some accessories. He's got a couple of flasks, I hope it's water, and then he's got his big satchel, which carries his food, you know, the food's pretty important to hobbits. And so he's making sure he's carrying plenty with him. When you look at his head, uh, and his hair is sort of uh, a rusty red color. Uh, you know, in, in the Lord of the Rings, of course, his hair was mostly gray. And uh, so here they've got this young uh, Bilbo portrayed with reddish hair, which is interesting. Let's look at his accessories. First, if you open up his coat, you'll see that he's packing a little short sword in there. See? Let's pull it out. So here's Bilbo's short sword. It was named Sting. He found it in some troll stash. And the cool thing is it will glow blue whenever goblins or, or orcs are around, which is handy to have. And uh, it's a good size for Bilbo. For the others, it would be much too small. Now here's his little two flask, flask set up. Of course, whenever you're going hiking, Always take a little bit of food and water because you don't know, you might get lost. And uh, here's this big bag. It looks like a true sort of an animal hide thing. And uh, it's even got the knot, see the rope knot in it. That's very cool. And that's where he's going to have his, probably his Pop-Tarts and stuff. So that's Bilbo Baggins of the West End Bagginses. And finally we have Gandalf the Grey, of course, the powerful wizard who leads the uh, dwarves and Bilbo on their quest to free uh, their land in the mountain. And uh, he's a large figure here, and he's heavy, and he has uh, a heavy cloak on. We'll take that off. He's got his cloak, he's got a staff, and he's got a long sword, a broadsword, and his hat. And here's where I'm having some trouble with this figure. Now, he's standing up now, but he's only really just balancing. What happens is, most of the other figures, uh, like, like here's Legolas, his feet are very stiff. His ankles are stiff. When I bend his ankles, they pretty much stay in place, right? See that? And I bend them back up, and they stay in place well. Gandalf, once I bend his ankles one time, they got very loose. Look how loose that is, see? Hmm? This one, too. Look how that, that's really loose. So if I get him to stand up at all, it's more like he's balancing on his heels. So it makes it difficult if he's off axis, if he's trying to lean forward or anything like that, uh, for him to stand up. Yeah, so it's being a little frustrating for me. He might have to, uh, I don't know, apply a base, put a base on him or something if you're having problems with him falling down on the shelf. And then Gandalf has this great long cloak, which does come off. We'll, we'll pull that off in a second so you can see the detail underneath. Whoa, there he goes. And then Gandalf has his wizard hat which, if I recall from Lord of the Rings, uh, he really only wore when he was coming into uh, Hobbiton. So that, I, I don't know, maybe he owes some people some money. He doesn't want anyone to recognize him. I mean, the rest of the time, he doesn't have the hat on. So I wonder, if you're Gandalf, when you take your hat off, where do you put it? All right, well, these are mysteries. And funny thing about the hat, too, is... Uh, it's even got little indentations, see that, in the hat. It's even got little indentations to fit his hair. So it fits on there really nice and stays in there. And it does really shade him and conceal him so people won't recognize him on the road. And so here's Gandalf. I pulled his cloak off and his hat, and, and that comes off easily. You can see he's got this nice leather belt and then a blue belt that uh, ties into his uh, scabbard to hold his sword. There he goes down again. I'm going to have to hold him up. And uh, also I like about this character, this figure, is these sleeves are well done. You see, he's got articulation on the elbows and the shoulders, but even then, you still got these big baggy sleeves and that, that fits in perfectly. See that? He can bend his elbows and he still has these huge sleeves. So that was a nice little trick they did there. And he's, you can see he's still got this flexible sort of a scarf here. And of course, and of course he's rocking that beard and look at the details in the beard. It's, you know, streaked and flowing around him. And the overcoat, the, the cloak will fit up underneath here. 
easily. Now look at his broadsword here. So he, he's got this huge broadsword. Well, he's a tall guy, so he should carry a long broadsword. And it's even got details on the handle, see? And then uh, there's no tooling on the blade, but there is sort of a, a, a channel formed into the center of the blade. And uh, yeah, that's all very nice. It's a huge, it's a huge sword. And uh, you can see if you look at his hands, he's got little uh, sort of wrist protectors. Let's get a good look there. There he goes. Yeah. So he holds the sword well. And of course, he, he should keep the staff in his hand as well because he's a wizard and he fights with that staff just as much as a sword. So that's Gandalf the Grey. That's a cool figure. Except for the standing up part, it's my nice, uh, it's my favorite figure. I just wish he'd stand up better. You shall not pass! All right, so I know that was from Lord of the Rings and not The Hobbit, all right? Don't be giving me any crap about that. Hey, I read The Hobbit when it first came out. Well, maybe not that long ago. The, the Hobbit came out in 1937. That's just like, just before World War II. But I read it before you were born and before your father was born. So just back off about a mile, all right? Yeah. Well, that's my look at the first of the Hobbit figures. And if you like Hobbit stuff, you better hit that subscribe button because coming up soon, I've got, that's right, Battle Axe and Sting Sword. And look at this. It includes the one true ring. Can this be true? Stay tuned and find out.
to kill me, I guess I'm doing okay I'm lost, I'm lost Among the millions Just an empty head Filled with the sky Between the boring